So Arjuna has seen the warriors on both sides. And seeing them, he sees it's going to be a multi-generational fratricide. And he is, he's, what am I doing over here? Physically, he's afflicted. And emotionally, ethically, he's conflicted. So we'll see his, what is he thinking? This text 31. Nacha shriyo anupashyami Hatva swajana mahave Nakaangshe vichayam krishna Nacha rajyam sukhani cha So the previous text ended with the point that he is seeing Viparitani Keshava. He is seeing inauspiciousness everywhere. So while the Gita is a series of verses or points being spoken by each character, the commentators have also dove, uh, dive, uh, they have dived deep into the mood of the two people. And thus they are anticipating when two people are having a conversation, see, then when a person speaks something, if they have a thought, then when they're going to speak the next point, at that time they anticipate what this person might speak. And they say, okay, this might be your concern, this could be your question, this could be your objection, this is how I address it. So sometimes there's unspoken communication between two people who understand each other quite well. Mm. So the text 30 was where we stopped. So he's saying causes of, I see only causes of inauspiciousness. I see only impending disasters. So the, in one sense, the obvious response to it could be that, but there is victory available for you. You can win this war, you can gain a kingdom, you can have prosperity. How can you consider those to be inauspicious? So he's saying that I don't see any long-term gain. The Sanskrit word Shreya, I don't see any long-term gain in killing my own relatives. So my own, what is the long-term gain in killing my relatives? And if that is the cost, then, then I feel that the cost is way too much for the result. The result is that kingdom and victory. He says, I don't I don't want it. So we are all we often do this cost benefit analysis that we could say, how much do I have to pay? Or how much will I get out of it? So he's mm -hmm. saying that what I'll have to pay losing my sojourn, my own people, my own relatives, my own family, that's too much of a cost to pay. I can't pay it. That's why I don't see any long-term good. Hang on, he's saying that, you may think that there'll be victory and kingdom, indirectly saying this, the cost of killing relatives, this is a long-term harm. And he indirectly he's stating that a victory and kingdom, this is short-term. So that is the implication. And he's saying that I am thinking of the big picture. And I I don't think this war is worth it. That's his thought over here. The question might come up that why do you feel the cost is so much? So he's saying, what is the value of the kingdom? Kim no Rajena Govinda, Kim Bhogairjivitenava, Yeshamarthe Kangshitam no. Rajim Bhoga Sukhanicha, the Ime Avastita Yudde, Pranam Stekwa Dhananicha, Acharya Pitara Putras, Tathaivacha Pitamaha, Matula Shashuras Pautra, Shala Sammandhinas Tatha, Etan Hantumichami, Ratopimadusudana, Apitrai Lokya Rajasya, Heto Kim Numahikrate,
Uh, he is not just making statements. He is not, in one sense, really advancing an argument. He is asking rhetorical questions, and that's often a powerful way of stating, you know, "What is the use of working your so hard if you have no time for your family? If your family feels that they don't care for you, you know, what is the use of exercising so much?" that you, know, you are you are in constant pain because of the exercise and you are not able to fit do any activity of with fitness so what is the point of it so that is as he is using rhetorical questions over here to convey his point so the previous point was saying that the previous was saying he sees the cost is to be far greater than the benefit so he is elaborating how he thinks the cost is greater now although he has seen the entire uh, array of warriors across multiple generations there are some whom he cares for especially and he, generally speaking for us you now we often think that happiness comes by achievements and there is some truth to that oh you know i i buy this big house i i get this new car i become the maybe i get the best employee award in my company these are all achievements and yes there is some truth to it but actually what makes even those achievements joyful is when we can share our joy with others hmm? when there is someone with whom we can celebrate those joys celebrate those achievements so if we don't have those so we need to we need people to celebrate with now for arjuna if we consider the situation is he is here and he is thinking of his two venerable elders bhishma and drona so he has trained in archery diligently throughout his life he has become a champion archer while that is undoubtedly true and he is of course a tough and warrior but still no matter how we grow up how much we grow up there is always a child inside us and those who are our elder those who are our seniors we we long for some appreciation some encouragement some recognition for them so he he's saying that you know if i win a great war that i would like to go and tell drona about it and i would like to thank him it is by your skills that i was able to win this war i would like to tell bhishma about it that it is in your dynasty the dynasty that you guarded amid so many dangers is that in that dynasty now i have achieved this victory so achievements in themselves are hollow if there is if the people with whom we are going to share those achievements are not there and he is saying that actually if they are dead what to speak of celebrating achievements i won't be able to even endure my life so he says three things there is kingdom there is happiness and then there is life life itself he says all of them are valueless to me what is the value if with those whom with whom i would like to enjoy these those are no longer there and he says not only they will will they be not there they will be not there because of me how can i do that i can't man he says that yes if now we are in a terrible war and if i don't kill them they will kill me but yet i can't bring it in my heart to kill them so he says that how can i kill the sons of dhritarashtra so that is the last part is bringing in the sons of dhritarashtra like duryodhan and others they have severely offended arjuna not just offended exploited and abused and defrauded arjuna and his family and he knows that the war is primarily against them 
the war is between them but he says that because they are all one unit so he says that i can't kill them i can't even i can't kill them and therefore i can't kill him kill duryodhan because they are all together i just can't do it so he's telling that he you know, we talked about the cost and the benefit so he is emphasizing that the cost is way too much in fact he says the benefit if you consider the weighing scale you say this is is the two sides of a weighing scale and the two are equal then that means we don't know what to do hmm? but he is now talking about the cost and he's talking about the benefit so he's telling that the cost okay so it comes out of like this isn't it so he's saying the cost is way way too high and he's saying that the benefit it's just worthless the benefit is nothing that life kingdom happiness all of them are utterly valueless so this this benefit is nothing and the cost is almost everything that i live for so i just can't do it so here we see that while arjuna is speaking it's not simply that he is overcome by emotions in a way that just reduces him to be a to a blobbering mass of tears he is articulating himself quite clearly and he is quite forcefully also quite poignantly he is articulating himself and he is saying that this is just not worth it i like the way it testament to the power of love so he is a person who cares deeply and because he cares deeply that's why he is affected so much he is devastated is shattered and now he is anticipating another objection yeah i will say that okay yes all that you are saying is true but there are bad people on the side you may not want to kill them you may be ready to kill them but they are terrible people and it is your duty to kill them because you are a, you are a protector of society so he addresses that now papamevashraye dasman hatvaitanatatayina tasman narha vayam hantum dhatarashtran sabandavan sujanam ikartham hatva sukhinasya madhava so now he is addressing a point that the word used in sanskrit is atataina the english is aggressors so the point of this word aggressors is that in certain situations violence is warranted not only is warranted it may even be necessitated so for example if somebody comes to our house and they come with a gun and they they threatening to break into the house and they are threatening that i'm going to shoot everyone over here then at that time if we have a gun we may decide that as soon as they they, they break the door i'm going to shoot them before they get a possible to shoot me so when somebody is an aggressor at that time violence can be warranted so he say yes they are aggressors he said but still they are my relatives and he says what will i gain by killing them what i will when he says what i will will i gain is what i will lose is far greater by that so in general when we are thinking especially when we have to take in multiple facts then which fact do we emphasize that is important so arjuna has two facts to consider that 
they are the other side is aggressors and they are relatives so arjuna's reasoning is he is focusing more on the fact that they are relatives and he is saying that so you could say that two ways even if they are relatives they they are still are aggressors so this would be the opposite emphasis that's the point which he's thinking yeah, they are aggressors that they they have to be penalized they have to be dis disciplined they have to be punished the other could be even if they are aggressors they are relatives they they still are relatives so the same set of facts can lead to two different conclusions because what is happening is different fact is emphasized so arjuna is emphasizing the fact that they are relatives and not the fact that they are aggressors he saying what will i gain and he not only says he not he not only talking here in terms of gain in terms of say immediate gain he is also thinking that there is long term gain he says there is none in fact there is harm and that harm he is talking in terms of papa that is sin so will sin overcome us so we will talk about this idea of sin later but let's talk about it in secular terms sin and crime are not the same thing but they are similar so if somebody is an aggressor if somebody is breaking into our house to kill us uh, if we sh shoot them normally we would say that yeah, you are not culpable if it's proven that you attack for self defense then you are not going to be criminally charged for that but arjuna is saying no the fact that they are relatives that i know that and still i'm fighting against them and i'm fighting for a kingdom it's not worth it he says that he is talking about sin here in terms of if i value kingdom more than i value the life of my relatives then that itself will be wrong on my part and that's how sin will overcome me when western scholar on the gita he said that when i read the first chapter i liked arjuna and then when krishna refuted arjuna from that time i stopped liking krishna arjuna's argument seemed so much stronger <laughs> yeah arjuna is actually building a very strong case over here and to understand how krishna will respond to that that's it's a fascinating discussion and it will we have to do it very carefully because while arjuna's arguments are based on almost emotional considerations krishna's arguments seem to be based more on rational or philosophical considerations that's why they seem a little more inaccessible they're not like that but they can seem like that in the session today we just continued discussing it was morely arjuna's reasons or reasoning for not fighting and the essentially his reasoning is that the cost is far greater than the benefit so and he's arriving that the cost is far greater than the benefit in multiple ways so the first thing he says is that at what what will i gain so the first thing just makes a rhetorical question what will we gain by it that means he's overall saying that the gain, he in his opinion the gain is much lesser and then he's saying that the on their side are relatives who not only i care for who i celebrate success with that care for is one thing so if i care, if they are not there then what is the point of victory so without them victory is hollow so that's their that's his point is this is parallel reason to bishma and drona and then he may say that okay that is the case but still isn't it uh, the fact that they are aggressors okay but he says that even if they are aggressors still that is a less important fact than the fact that they are relatives and therefore he thinks that taking their life 
is not as in especially when it's for a kingdom i just don't feel it your kingdom is far less valuable than the lives of my relatives and therefore he says i will not fight so for him overall if we consider the cost benefit it's become hugely tilted it's almost like this that the benefits is next to nothing and the cost is everything for him he feels and therefore he says i just can't fight thank you